So producer dude said we gotta get in the lake, forget those guide clients, we actually have to go out and fish. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take you out, even though we got trains blazing up over here. We're gonna show you a few things. It's springtime, the fish are really whacked out weird. They're not where they normally are. The water's totally different. It's much cooler than it normally is, even though some of the fish have started to spawn already. So we've really been relying heavily on the electronics and watching the water, watching the satellite imagery because the water, the clean water has been changing drastically because you guys all know it has been blowing crazy this whole spring no matter where you live. So every day is a little different and it's causing us to adjust on the fly. But between looking at the satellite images and then also just doing the old hummingbird running at 20, 25, 30 miles an hour, we've been doing pretty good. So buckle up and hang with us, here we go. So producer dude has been working on some stuff. If you guys haven't seen it, we've got a lot of the new podcasts rolling. We've got some really good ones coming. We've got some new videos. You guys keep asking me all kinds of questions, then we've got videos that literally cover just that. You guys asking dipsy diver questions or marking at speed. Make sure you check out the channel, watch that stuff. We even tell you how to make walleye fillets. Cook them up. I just like to set the rods right in the back deck when I'm letting them out. Because your buddy always screws stuff up. It's like, you know, Country Steve, he may or may not, I don't know. But now I got an extra pair of hands. I just let the stuff do its thing. And boom, boom, we're already ready to roll. We didn't mark a lot in here, but it had the right water color. And that's so important. And you know, you can look at it with your eyes and you say, well, what is that? Well, it's kind of chalky looking. You can see your prop, but it's, it's definitely off colored. And you can look at a satellite image and it really helps narrow down, you know, where you're gonna go in the springtime because we get, man, we had such huge winds. We didn't launch today till midday because it was so crazy blowing. And I just put one rod out with a snap weight on it and I mean, it's considerably deeper than some of the stuff we saw. So far it worked. So. All right. This fish actually hit, I think it came off and rather another one hit it or whatever, but that's why sometimes I don't like to get on the rod too quickly. Because sometimes you get a second chance. Except for when producer dude's on the camera, he usually only gets it once. Got about. 10 foot of line and he's still down, so that's a good sign. There's a leader. Oh yeah. What a chunky monkey. Oh, and get this thing undone. Oh, he had hooks in the face, bicycle case. So that's probably a small female, you know, maybe four pounds, something like that, but that's probably gonna be giving it birth here shortly. We're gonna let this sucker go. All right, so you see all those little specks? I can't tell you what they look like. My mom would get mad. But those are actually, those are walleyes or at least some type of decent sized fish. And it, you know, it, it's worth noting because you see there's way more on the left side of the boat than there is the right. So I bet if I get a bite in the next minute or two, it's, it's gonna be on this side. But when you look at the 2D sonar, here, here's what it is. There's all those fish. But the advantage to having this hooked up the way that I do, I got a Y cable in here on my hummingbird and I can go back and forth from one to the other because look at them, you got 
pretty much not a whole lot of fish there. And on the left side of the boat, we've got just a tremendous amount of fish over here. So I guarantee if we get bit in the next second or two, it's going to be on this side. So that's a really good people say, do I, how do I need to use side imaging or do I need to use it for open water? You know, absolutely. I probably don't use it enough myself. And also for uh, marking uh, bait fish. You know, a lot of the bait fish are, we're going to see, if I keep seeing a lot of bait fish high in the column there, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to have a run a bait high because I'll have the confidence to know, hey, if there's enough bait high, there's going to be some fish in that column. But yet, you know, marking fish, let's say five to 10 feet down, unless there's just an atrocious amount of them, that cone is so small that you're just not going to see them. So little things like this, you know, pick up a fish or two or sometimes turn you on to a pattern completely. You know, you just, you just got to pay attention to the fish, even though traditionally this is probably not what we would be doing. If they want to be deep, they can be deep. I don't think this one's a giant, but I think right now the, the key has kind of been the speed. We're going 1-4, and the current is kind of wacky here, and we've been kind of jogging back and forth. So, again, doing a lot of things I don't normally do, but uh, putting the cruise control on. Putting the cruise control on my, my min coder, just right through the remote, it's kind of nice. And that's letting me be kind of hands-free since I just got me and the producer, dude. Just a little fell, it's a male. Just gonna go ahead and cowbunga him. I don't he got lost in the if there's any of you young fellows watching this, I'm just gonna tell you what happened here. Let me tell you what happened. This guy was chasing some ladies, <laughs> okay? Spawning time. He got into trouble. Now in most boats, this thing's gonna be a sandwich, but I'm gonna be nice and let him go. So young bucks, let you know this could be an expensive lesson. Do you know what I'm saying? The skirts, they get pricey. Shorter the skirt, higher the maintenance. I heard that before and the longer I live, the more I think that's true. <laughs> So we did a little driving around there, like to cover the water, looking, not fishing. And it's just crazy that that water color difference, as like we've talked about this in how many of the spring videos, but it is absolutely the deal maker or breaker because, you know, that's where we, we had the fish that we were going to catch or we didn't, all based on that. Long story short, you got, if it's super clean, we don't catch too good and it got really dirty. We caught a few small ones, but it just it's so much harder in that dirty water some days it'll pop especially when it's sunny and it's laying down like this but that kind of chalky in between as soon as i'd hit those little patches boom i mean the hummingbird just lights up with all those little nuggets on there you know make sure you check out our high speed video so we can show you what that actually is and what what not but i mean i can't tell you how much of a difference it makes but the problem is it's all swirled out here when you look at those satellite images and you see all those little changes so it's hard you know sometimes i just really like to drive around that's why I try to get away from people so you can do that. And you find out where those little pockets are that you can make a long run. So let's say maybe you can you can make a mile long or more pass, and it's just more efficient. Because you can't catch them going 30. So here's the deal. I'm really trying, really trying to make these fish come higher, and they don't. We've only got two rods down, and that's what's catching all our fish. And this one's a better one. This ain't, this ain't, this is more of a picture taker. No matter how you look at it, and I'm gonna have to go really slow, which is it's hard, you know. All the trips out here, we've had guide clients, and I haven't had to reel. And now when I do, producer dude says, aren't you supposed to go slow? He's shaking that. But, man, they just, they want it down. You got to give them what they want. Like, in a typical situation, I should have six of these things out. But when you're by yourself, what are you going to do, reel six in? Of course, if you watched our Dipsy video last summer, that's exactly what we did. 
think we had five rods out, five on at once. Producer dude, actually, I'll give him credit. You, uh, you did us really good. You even got the net for me. That's amazing. Yeah, this one's got a little more meat in it. So. Huh. Got to drag a little tight. You know, these reels, this is the new Shimano Dakota, they take in like 38 inches every time you turn the handle. So people are like, why didn't you reel the fish in? Well, we got another one on now. We got our middle, we got our other board going. This is a good time to do this. You go, whoop, 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 whoop. If you can hear that beep, that was me hitting the bird. Because when you find these little areas, you'd be amazed how many times you go back and man, they're right on that little spot in the, in the cold weather. Summer, I think they move around. You know, they're chasing that bait, they move more. But when it's cold like this, you catch a couple, boom, boom. So I did make that board finally work out there. We got that same one, we got the one high board. Literally, a couple things are catching everything. You can see that rod just cruising. Trying to be so good and be patient. Look at that fat mom out there. Big old fat belly pig. Big old nasty girl. It's nasty, just big old fatty. You know, one thing I think we, I know we've talked about in some of the videos, but patience is really good. But the other thing is just, you know, not trying to pull that fish one way or the other. Just, I kind of keep the rod up and it's like pulling an anchor. I just go where it goes so I'm not pulling against it. And when she wants to give up, I take in line. And when she wants to fight, I just, I'm barely turning. I mean, this isn't like a donkey of all donkeys or anything. But, I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, it's got a big old fat belly. I mean, this this girl right here is about she about to go to the OR. She about to have oh yeah, boy. Oh yeah, I got. You know what? I'm changing my statement. Changing my statement, the officer. I'm changing my statement. Holy spicoli. This was hooked good enough country. Steve couldn't even have lost this one. That's pretty good if you know him. Oh my good gracious. We're going to take a picture of this in a little bit, giving her a little breath back. Who stuck with that? Look at that back. Oh, buddy. Look at that donkey. That's donkey, folks. I don't care where you're at. Lake Erie or not, that's donkey. One thing you always want to look for with this is the water clarity. When in doubt, the water clarity most days is going to help you out. And you want that kind of chalky, little bit of greenish to it. We'll show you a cutaway here, but too clean is usually not too good. If the screen just doesn't have as much stuff. Some days you catch them, but most of the time you can almost just visually see where you're going to end up fishing. By just looking in your eyes there. That's why the satellite imagery is so good. So we're going to put the Minn Kota down. A little producer dude says, just catch fish now. That's what he's telling me to do. You know, sometimes you're just catching them in the right area. I mean, just, you can do no wrong. You've broken clock fishing, whatever you want to call it. But really, I think the key was when we, we got that heading, just that angle to dangle. And we're kind of going and quartering the, the waves, but we're going with the current. And that really is the key in all honesty um, most days you want to go with the current but and again we we didn't have any bites up high we had like no bites and now we've caught four in about two minutes on those higher rods and I'm telling you everybody just wants to fish the screen and, and that's why I only put two deep ones down because I knew this was gonna happen it just it always does when you got flat calm stuff you've got that chalky water and you've got sun. Like if this is overcast, 
probably a different deal. We're probably fishing longer leads. We're probably gonna have a few more weights out. But when it's like this, different story. You know, and sometimes if you're fishing with your buddy, a good thing to do is just reach over and crank down like we've got that fish over there. You know, as you see, it's pretty far away, but you know, just to kind of get some hooks in there, take up slack a little bit. Even though I think both of these are pretty good sized fish. So, oh yeah, there's that donk right there. Look at that donkey. Look at that donkey. Look at that donkey. Oh boy. Choke up, choke up, son. Oh, choke. Oh, oh, oh. This fish obviously doesn't know what Weight Watchers is. Yes, Becco. We are going to let these go, but we're going to let them make them famous, take a picture, give them a little breather in my box here. Because, because, because. Oh, we got rods everywhere. I feel like we're just a human highlight reel right now. We went from zero to hero. But all of these things, when people, you know, this is like bacon, man. You can't do one thing wrong. You got to put it all together. And I made a big loop out here driving. And we saw where that water changes at. We got in the clean stuff, there wasn't the fish. We got in this chalky in between stuff. And this is just flat out where they're at. Donkeys. Mm. I don't I like catching them all, big or small, but I prefer the fat girls. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You need you need them ones that are eating like Burger King. They ask for extra fry sauce. You know what I mean? You guys know what fry sauce is? It's a western thing. Trying to catch up with this one. We got so one thing you got when you've when you're reeling like this and you're kind of quartering them fish, remember, they're not right behind that board necessarily. And I'm trying to, I, I can feel them swim with and not swim with me. And that's a lot of times how these fish come off is you don't have the tension on them you think you do. So, taking your board off by yourself. We got no rods left. We got no rods in the water. It's crazy. Had a solo quad. Producer, dude, you're gonna have fun editing this thing. Or you actually you tell me it's easy when I just catch them fast and we're done. Sometimes that happens. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Good time to check your drag. You get 30, 40 feet from the boat. That's inevitably that's when they are going to start shaking their heads. So you get Kind of rock to sleep just reel 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 and then all of a sudden they start bucking and you rip the hooks out that last donk man we didn't even have oh see that see that look at ooh. see that right there you don't want to be reeling when that's going down or you're probably not going to have anything else to worry about <laughs> you'll be unbuttoned that last big donkey we caught fell right off in the net I think I'm going to have to... Oh yeah, it's a, oh it's another donkey. It's, it's, so here's we... Oop, let out line. Oop. It's a donkey. It's a donkey and I knew it from the start. This looks like a controlled poop show. Semi-controlled. So one other thing too, I tell clients this every day. You want to go where that fish is at. Don't pull away from them. It's like that fish is like pulling up an anchor. It's not where you think it is. 
So you, I like to keep that rod up. And just go straight with it. This is probably going to look like I'm eating hot wings at the Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, look at that donkey. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh boy. Look at that. Oh, boy, he's got... Oh, boy, this is a day to have Country Steve with you, the way the hooks are in. Oh, my. Hit it head first like a soccer star. Oh boy. We're gonna make this one famous too, but we will let her go. Wow. Oh, trying to be easy on the trail. Look at that big old earthen. Whew. Freak show. Well, a quick scan of the boat. Shit show. <laughs> Good shit show. If you fish with me, you know what happens, what we call it when you don't get the fish in. But we that's not mom friendly. You're going to have to fish with me to find out those terms. So we're, we're probably going to make a run back. Producer dude said I get Chick fil A if we catch donkeys. So obviously, you were, anybody that's fished with me knows when the pink socks go on the rods we're done thanks for tuning in and just we're shooting you guys straight make sure you check out other videos we get tons of questions which we like but most of them are answered in multiple videos we've got stuff like dipsy questions watch your dipsy video our high speed marking watch the video we pretty much call it like it is there's no monkey business no bs so all these little things we're telling you about really do matter those are the difference makers little things big difference today was a 130 heading that was the deal Release tip, head first like a soccer star. Don't slam them down, but let them go. And don't pull them against the water. You don't want to hold them backwards. Gills against the water, drowns them.